Today we're going to be talking about how to represent decimal subtraction. So we are in your module 10 through 20 book. It says 10 through 20 at the bottom. And we're going to start looking at page 343. 343. And we're going to um, talk about the lesson together. So <clears throat> what we're doing today is we are making a model or a drawing that represents decimal subtraction. So kind of like we talked about with representing um, addition with decimals, you may not use that strategy right off, but we're going to um, see models and illustrations about our decimal numbers. So I want you to be familiar with how it looks. Um, so like with the addition, we saw a model and a model and we were counting those together. A lot of times with subtraction, we will see a model and then there's some taken away from it. So that's what I wanted us to, to look at today. All right, so we're on page 343. Follow along with me. You should be doing this with, um, with me in your book. So for our spark your learning, it says Adriana monitors the growth of a bamboo cane. How much does the bamboo cane grow from day five until day nine? Now, I know it's a little small for y'all, but you should be looking along with me in your books. Okay, so use a visual model to help you find how much it grows. So I can look here and say, well, here's this number, and we would say that three tenths, and I have this number, think about how you would say that, 52 hundredths, okay? Well, we can see from our picture which one is larger, we can see which bamboo is taller, but we also should be able to look at these and compare them and say, oh, I know that three tenths is smaller than 52 hundredths. And remember, we can add this zero here at the end of our three because we're not changing the value of our number if we do that. We have three tenths. We still, if we add a zero, we have 30 hundredths, which is the same value as three tenths. But it helps us to look at it, kind of resembles money. It's easy for us to say 30 cents is smaller than 52 cents. So if you're going to represent this, and you want to see how much it grew from day five to day nine, then we're, we're trying to figure out what happened in between right here. So um, in this case, our larger number, we're gonna, going to subtract away our smaller number from it. We don't always subtract the smaller from the larger, and we'll see that as we do some work. But in this case we are because we're going from day five to day nine. So how I would do that if I'm representing it, remember our lesson today is representing it with a model. You may not choose that strategy right off, but we've got to be able to recognize what that looks like. So I want to represent 52 hundredths. 52 hundredths means I have something, one whole thing, and our whole, kind of like you see on the side of your paper, is a hundred. One hundred of those cubes, okay? So to make it easy on myself, I know I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, okay? Um, I can do the same thing over here. Don't worry about your lines, it's okay as long as you have a um, hundred. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, it's okay if some of them are bigger. All right, I'm gonna make this come out a little bit so we can see it. All right, so once you draw your hundred, and remember, don't stress about how it looks, that's okay. All right, I wanna represent that 52. So um, just to help us kind of see it a little bit better, I think I'll do Maybe I should do red. So I'm going to first represent my 52. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 
and I have 52 hundredths. Remember, 52 hundredths. You're saying the fraction. I'll write it in my darker marker. You are saying the fraction when you say the decimal correctly. That's 52 hundredths. 52 hundredths. 52 out of 100. Okay? If we're taking away 30 of them, then I'm going to just take away 30. I'm going to mark out my 10, 20, 30. And I can look here to see what is left. I have 10, 20, 2 hundredths left. Remember, 22, the whole number, is not the same value as 22 hundredths. Think about it, my 22 whole number, that's like $22. 22 hundredths is like 22 cents. If I was paying you for a job, I bet you'd rather have $22 than 22 cents. So the decimal is very important, don't forget that. All right, so that's how you may see decimal subtraction represented. Now over here, I can add my zero like we already discussed. Two minus zero is zero. Five tenths minus three tenths is two tenths. And I get it also over there. I think it's a great strategy to represent it visually, but then also um, calculate it. So you're approving that answer. Nothing wrong with doing that. All right, let's turn to 345. I skipped page 344. Um, and just went on to 345. We're at 345. You see the fluke at the top of the page. I know it's small, but hopefully you're looking along in your book writing with me, so seeing my work isn't the most important thing. Okay. All right. So it says, <clears throat> Priya and Nathan compare the weights of their flutes. How much more does Priya's flute weigh than Nathan's? How much more... How much more? <clears throat> Let's think about that in just a, a easy way. If we use the words, how much more? I have five cookies. You have three cookies. How many more cookies do I have? I have five, you have three. I have two more than you. Now you may have just thought about three and added four, five. You may have subtracted. There's lots of different strategies on how you get that. As long as you're realizing the how much more is that difference in between those two numbers, okay? So over here, Nathan's flute, and I'm going to write it a little bit bigger, is two and 75 hundredths ounces. Make sure we're correctly saying those numbers. Priya's is three and 81 hundredths ounces. So I know Priya's weighs more than Nathan's, okay? But I wanna know exactly how much more, all right? So we can draw a quick picture to represent the weight of Priya. So we are just doing hers. She's got one, two, three whole ounces. So I'm just gonna draw some squares to represent a whole. But then she has 81. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's my little one. Remember, this is a quick picture that helps you. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. I didn't do anything fancy. I didn't count out 10 squares or one square. I just drew it in a way that was simple for me to see. Okay? So, how can you find how much more Prius flute weighs? Draw to show your thinking. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to look at Nathan's flute and I am going to do just what we did on the last page. I know Nathan's is 2 and 75. So I'm going to, and I hope you guys can see it good, I'm going to mark out. Hmm, can't really see it that good. Maybe I'll do it with black. There's one, two. Nathan has. 75 hundredths. So I'm going to take out, remember she had 8 tenths, so I'm going to take out 7 tenths. And then it's 75. So I'm going to take away 5 right here. So one way that I can do it is, well I know if I take away 5 from that 10, I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 left over. 
So I took it away from my 10, um, but I know that I'll have five more ones. So, um, let's see what we have left. What we have left is one hole, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six ones left. So if I have one hole, that's one and. Now the important part is how are we going to represent six hundredths? Right after the decimal is the tenths place. I can't put my six there because I don't have six tenths. I have no tenths, right? Look at your picture. <clears throat> you didn't have tenths left. You only had your little hundredths but I do have six of those hundredths. So I have one and six hundredths. Let's see it right there. One decimal zero six, one and six hundredths. Make sure you don't put that six in the tenths place because that would not be correctly representing it. Okay, now like we said earlier, it's a great strategy to have a picture, but it's always good to double check by working that out. We had three and 81 hundredths. We took away two and 75 hundredths. Do you remember in our picture where we had 10? Or we took our, our 10 and we changed it into ones? Well, or hundredths, I'm sorry. We took our tenths and we changed it into hundredths. That's all we're doing right here. One hundredth minus five hundredths. I don't have enough hundredths to take it away. So I'm gonna borrow from my tenth just like we did in our picture, guys. And remember, it was seven. Now I have 11 hundredths because I've got those added to what I already have. So that would give me six. Seven minus seven is zero tenths. Three minus two is one whole. So we check that. You know, sometimes subtraction can be a little tricky. So I also add when I subtract. And let me show you how you can quickly do that. When you subtracted these two numbers and got this um, difference, they're already on top of each other. One and six hundredths plus two and seventy-five hundredths should give us our total three and eighty-one. But let's check it to find out. So I don't even rewrite it. I just use the space I've already got. We know five hundredths plus six hundredths is going to be eleven hundredths. Seven tenths plus one more is eight tenths and two plus one is three. Put a big old check right there because it checked out. Using a model is a great thing but having a uh, another way to just double check that answer is also a good thing. All right so that's where we're going to stop here. You've got some problems in your homework journal that you can do to help you practice this skill.